In this video, we're going to start to look at probabilistic um, models, models that includes probabilities um, somewhere. And we're specifically going to look at the naive Bayes classifier. This classifier makes the assumption that each of the features in your feature vector are independent of one another. We won't actually start with the naive Bayes classifier with making those strong assumptions. We'll start with classifiers that are a bit more general and then see why it's actually useful to make um, stronger assumptions about the dependence and the independence of your features. So if we wanted to follow a probabilistic approach to classification, then we could construct a model f that takes this input x and simply predicts um, whichever class, little k, has the highest probability given my input feature vector. To use this model, we of course need to know um, what the probability is of a particular class given our input feature vector. And to do that, we can use Bayes' rule to unpack that a little bit more. So here we've got the probability of being in class number k given x, that's equal to the density of the feature vector given the class times the probability of being that in that class divided by the density value for that feature vector. This term in the denominator here, that term is the same whether we're looking at class number two or class number five. Um, and since we're interested just in the class with the highest probability here, we can actually drop this term because it's the same for all the classes. So then you can write that the probability of being in class k, little k, given my feature vector, that's proportional to the density of x given that class times this prior probability of being in this class. This equation is still very general. I mean, we've written down some nice stuff with p's in them, but to actually use it, we need to decide on forms for this density and a form for this prior probability, and then figure out how we will actually learn their parameters from the training data. So actually the parameters got lost on this slide somewhere. I was a little bit sloppy with my notation, as is many other textbooks. But here we have theta, and I use that to denote all the parameters that we will have in the model. For linear regression, we normally had a w vector there. And now I'm just calling it theta and kind of grouping all the parameters in there. So we could write out this equation a little bit more concretely by saying that the probability of y uh, equal to little k given x and all my parameters, right? All the assumptions I'm going to make and all the parameters I need to figure out for these probability uh, density functions and probability mass functions. That's directly proportional to p of x given y is equal to k. And again, all my parameters times p of y equal to k again given all my parameters okay and then that just makes it a little bit more um, concrete that we actually need to decide on the forms for this thing and this thing and then also figure out a way to learn the parameters from the training set so a classifier that explicitly models this and this that's called a base classifier so before get, getting into the details let's just think about this intuitively so let's say I give you a data set like this. The data set has two features, a x1 and a x2. There are three classes, the blue crosses, the green circles, and then this orange looking squares. And you want to build a classifier like the one that we saw on the previous slide. So you want to classify each point as being in a specific class and K will now either be blue cross, green circle, um, orange um, square. Given my input feature vector X, that's going to be proportional to the density of X given that I'm in this specific class times the prior probability that I am in that specific class. Okay, that's what we want to do. Now, okay, to do this, we need to figure out what this is and we need to figure out what this is. Let's write out um, completely each of the terms that we kind of need here. So we need to figure out what this term is going to be and then we need to figure out what the densities are going to be. So 
just take a second. So everything we need is we need the probability of being in the blue crosses, um, green circles, um, orange squares, right? And these probabilities are basically probabilities where we don't care about the feature vector. It's that's why I call that the prior probability. It's like the probability of being in the blue square class when I haven't told you anything else about the actual input, the data that we're getting. And then apart from that, we also need to figure out what's going to be the density of X, given that we're in the blue class, the density of X, given that we're in the green class, and the density of X, given that we're in the um, orange square class. Now, genuinely just pause for a second and think. I give you this data set, that's my training data, okay? And I ask you from the training data, how do you pick a value for this probability? Okay, I can give you a short hint. These three um, probabilities here, if I sum them, they should equal one, okay? Uh, and you pick these probabilities without looking at the input features. X. You're just looking at basically the prior probability of being in a specific class. Okay, and now for these ones, let's just take the blue cross one. Okay, so here we need a density over our input features given that we're in the blue cross one. So that actually means let's just ignore all this for now. Okay, and we just look at the blue crosses. And I ask you, we're, we're sure that we're in the blue cross cross. Now model some density for, um, for the feature vectors X, given that we're in that class. So here is one common approach that you can follow. So let's call the prior probabilities. We'll just give that a name. So pi little k is the prior probability of being, uh, you know, a, a blue cross. So you could have pi of blue cross here. And a common approach to use is to simply count the number of training points assigned to that class and then divide that by the total number of training points. So in this case, on this slide, you will just count up how many blue points you have and out of the total number of points um, that gives you, that fraction tells you the prior probability of being in the blue cross class. Now the other term that we need is the density of X given that we're in a particular class. So just looking at this slide again, again what we do is we ignore all of this stuff and we're just looking at the blue points. And I ask you, try and choose a model that models the feature vector given that we're in this blue class. And one approach might be to simply put a multivariate Gaussian on this. We're going to model this data with a Gaussian. The Gaussian will probably, uh, if I scribble it out, it will probably, you know, using that convention that we used from before, um, where we look at the density from the top, the multivariate Gaussian would, might look something like that. So that's just really expressed in this equation here. The density for X, given that we're in the blue cross class, is modeled by a multivariate Gaussian with some blue cross mean and some blue cross covariance matrix. And what we can do is we can set that mean and that covariance matrix to the maximum likelihood estimate. And we do that for each of the classes. So we do it for the green circles and for the orange squares as well. And this has a name, it's called quadratic discriminant analysis. In this case, theta here, the parameters would actually be for each class, you have a mean vector and a covariance matrix, okay? And you're going to have K classes, right? So from little K equal to one up to big K, and that's theta in this case. Now this approach seems sensible, but it could be problematic. Just as a reminder, each of these covariance matrices um, is a D by D matrix. Now, if the dimensionality of your feature vectors are very high, if you have a very, very high D, then you're going to have to set a whole bunch of parameters here, right? You're going to have to estimate D by D parameters for each of the K classes. And if you only have a few data points in, if this, the number of training points is not that much, then it's going to be difficult to estimate all of these parameters.
So one thing we could do is we could say, listen, instead of estimating this problematic covariance matrix, which has, you know, a ton of parameters compared to the mean vector, which is just a D by one vector, and the covariance matrix is kind of problematic. Why not set one covariance matrix for all of the classes? So we just estimate one sigma for all of the classes, and then we have separate mean vectors for each of the different classes. The benefit of doing this is that then the covariance matrix, the single covariance matrix, we can fit that using a lot more data. Basically, each of the data points would contribute to that covariance matrix where in the case of quadratic discriminant analysis, only the data points assigned to this class, k, little k, contrib contributes to the maximum likelihood estimate of that covariance matrix. So in this case, we assume we've got one covariance matrix and we model um, all of the data with that single covariance matrix. This is actually called linear discriminant analysis. Now the naive Bayes um, classifier actually goes uh, one step further. In a Eve base, we assume that each feature in our feature vector is independent. So that means that here we've got an X, right, our feature vector, and that consists of D dimensions, capital D. And if we assume that there are each um, of these features are independent of the others, then this simply turns into the product of the density of each individual dimension given the class. So we can make this assumption for any distribution, not just Gaussians, but for the Gaussian case, this leads to the following equation, where instead of having a multivariate Gaussian with that big equation that we saw before, the um, density of X given the class now just reduces to the product of a little univariate Gaussians here. So each of the dimensions D is modeled by a separate unit variate Gaussian with some mean value and some um, variance. And the nice thing about this approach is it's really easy to get the maximum likelihood estimate for a uh, univariate Gaussian, right? You just have a bunch of values for the X's from that particular dimension. You calculate the mean and you calculate the variance. So all you need to do in this case is you need to um, fit D um, univariate Gaussians. But remember, you fit D univariate Gaussians for each of the K classes. So you'll fit one for um, the first class, the second class, and the third class, and so on. So you need to fit D times K univariate Gaussians which is actually relatively simple, right? In Python, to get the mean and to get the variance, it's just two lines. So it, this is two lines, and you multiply that with um, your k different classes. So on the iris data set, I fit a naive base model. Um, so let's just see what that looks like. And before we look at uh, how it classifies this space, in a similar way um, that we did in the k nearest neighbors, video, we're first just going to see where it actually plumps these um, um, Gaussians. And this is the plot of the Gaussians. And what you can see is that with the naive Bayes assumption, this feature here and this feature here is modeled independent of each other. And that's why you get these Gaussians, which are kind of like axis aligned. Very intuitively, I just quickly want to give an idea of what quadratic discriminant analysis and linear discriminant analysis would have done on this on this data. So if we did quadratic discriminant analysis, then probably what would have happened is for the blue class, you would have a Gaussian lying like this. For the green class, ugh, I don't know, maybe a blob lying somewhere, you know, there. And then for the orange class, the first colors, I don't know, maybe a blob lying um, like somewhere like that. So that's different from the naive base where you would have everything um, axis aligned. If we did LDA, linear discriminant analysis, then we would have a single covariance matrix for all three of the classes. And that would mean that um, the Gaussians would basically have the same slant, and the, kind of the same orientation, but their means would be different. So we would have a mean vector, I don't know, for the blue class, maybe there. For the green class, 
the green one is really hard maybe there and then for the orange one i don't know maybe there oh, i don't know let's say there but then the covariance matrix would actually be the same for the three classes so um and all of the data would contribute to the covariance matrix so you would have maybe the slant running like this so the covariance matrices will be the same but the means um, would be different here you would have your orange mean and here you would have your uh, green mean at the center so that's lda okay but let's go back to naive base in this case we assumed each of the features are independent so you've got those these axis aligned multivariate gaussians we can also look at the boundaries of classification for this model so like we did for um, k nearest neighbors we set up a little grid and then for each point in the grid we ask what would that point be assigned to and that's the result of um, when we use Gaussian naive base so all the points here in this region would be classified as versicolor all of them here would be classified as setosa and all of them here would be classified as virginica I hope this video gives you a good idea of how we can build um, Bayes classifiers and specifically naive Bayes. You won't have the full de details for um, quadratic discriminant analysis and linear discriminant analysis. But what I want you to get out of this is just how we basically go from those more advanced models to naive Bayes and the reason that we're doing that.